Were you ever just playing the Arkham games and thought, man, this would be so much more fun if there was flashy damage numbers, three AI teammates, a store, and an unfinished storyline? No? Well, tough. That's what we're here to talk about. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a new game from Rocksteady Games, best known for their Arkham series. The game is set within that universe too. The game is a third person, online only, multiplayer, co-op, live service, open world looter shooter. A bit different to the open world story driven metroidvania style of the Arkham games. The game has for obvious reason gained a lot of controversy over the story and new gameplay style. I played the entire game without interacting with any other gamers, so keep this in mind. So is it the disaster we all thought it would be, or is it actually good? Let's go check in with our friends at the Justice League. The story follows the Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot and King Shark, being sent to Metropolis where Brainiac has taken over and also taken over the Justice League, including Mr. Batman, which following the ending of the Arkham Knight game will seem strange but all is explained in a little museum at the start of the game. Basically, Batman came out from pretending to be dead, so he could have friends. But the Justice League are now evil and scary, so it's up to the squad, Task Force X, Self Unalive Squad, to kill the Justice League. I won't be spoiling any story beats, but let's just say the controversy comes from the commitment to the title. After finishing the story though, I can say it's a lot better than I thought it would be. I actually do like the commitment to the title, and it gives some good story moments. But as a live service game, it does still feel unfinished, assumably so they can keep adding more through seasons. Voila! Ah, oh, bro. Oi, Walla! What the hell have you set us into? It's a bloody war zone out here. There's a giant skull in the sky. Congratulations, Task Force X. You're the first assets to make it into Metropolis alive. We're sending a signal transponder to your location. Your orders are to activate that transponder. Waller out. Give me one reason why we should go out into that shit show. The bombs, dumbass. Why the curiosity? The gameplay of Suicide Squad is a third person looter shooter. The core of the game revolves around shooting bad guy aliens, doing various missions, while playing as one of the four Suicide Squad members. Each squad member's differences are the weapons they can use, the traversal mechanics they can use, and their skills and abilities. The main noticeable differences being their traversal mechanics. Harley uses SMGs, pistols, and miniguns while using Batman's grapple hook to swing around like Spider-Man. Deadshot uses assault rifles, pistols, and snipers, and uses a jetpack to fly around with that'll overheat if used too much, and also allows you to hover with while shooting. Boomerang uses shotguns, snipers, and SMGs, and uses a gauntlet that lets him tap into the speed force to zip around with. Finally, King Shark uses miniguns, assault rifles and shotguns, and he jumps. I find Harley's to be the least fluid out of the characters. It feels as though you should be able to keep swinging, but you can only swing twice before having to touch the ground to jump off a wall. But they are all fun enough to use, I just wish you could use them more fluidly and constantly to keep moving. The only one that is fluid is King Shark, as he basically just jumps everywhere and runs. Each character does also use a melee weapon of some kind, but they aren't used too much in terms of combat, mainly being used to break enemy shields or utilise another mechanic called shield harvesting, which is how you heal. Unlike other games where when on low health you can scurry off and hide behind a brick wall to regain health, Suicide Squad makes you fight for the regen. Shooting an enemy in the legs will eventually allow it to be shield harvested. Once the enemy is in that state, you can melee attack them and it will drop shields for you. This makes combat very aggression heavy. And I do like it, but it is also kind of annoying sometimes when you're on low health, there's thousands of enemies, and none of them are letting you shoot them in the knee. You also use melee to start a juggle that lets you do some extra damage, but you will mostly just be using guns and grenades. Each character will level up to a maximum of 30. While leveling, you'll be unlocking character skills in the skill tree. This is where you can mess around with the builds and such, and you can change things around later if you so choose. Their abilities are just variations of just nuking an area and focusing power onto a single enemy, and their ultimate abilities are just slow time down. So on the abilities front, it's not that exciting. Suicide Squad also includes all the typical workings of this style of game. Elemental effects, coloured loot, super awesome loot sets, and gear modifying in various ways. You can change stats and effects of any weapon you get to better suit what you are going for. Missions in the game are all very similar. Main missions will task you with basically just attacking and defending points, 
and every now and then you'll have a boss fight against a member of the Justice League. All of which revolve around shooting a giant health bar while they do moves relating to that character. Batman's fight is one of the more unique ones, but it still does revolve around shoot a lot till dead. You also have character missions to do for your support team, so you can unlock more gear items and contract slots to do. These missions I find some of the more annoying in the game purely for the fact that they have a requirement of the enemy only taking damage under certain circumstances. While ones like Under Afflictions is fine since you can just kind of hose down an area and now you'll do damage, ones like Critical Hits and Shield Breaks are more annoying since the enemy will heal if you don't do these things. This just makes the missions drag on and feel way more annoying than they should be. There are also endgame missions which revolve around going to different worlds and doing the same missions as before. Thankfully without any weird requirements. For me personally, the gameplay and characters are fun enough that these same missions aren't too bad, but understandably for some, it will get repetitive. The main thing that does get repetitive is whenever you finish any type of mission, be it an endgame mission or just one you come across in the world, once done you'll be met with a result screen, which takes so long to get through and it's just very tedious. Other games like The Division just seamlessly let you leave missions once done, this game makes a hoo-ha, here's your loot, here's your level up, and it's a small thing but it takes up time and being unable to skip it is just very annoying, especially if you're grinding which is what you'll be doing most of the time. I would explain the missions but they are very much just stop enemies attacking things, attack enemies to get the things, and save people from the enemies who are attacking them. When at the end game some missions will take place in alternate dimensions, this is where I think they'll expand things in terms of the live service part of the game which will include new characters, areas, and store items. Enemies in the game are varied, well, in abilities. Visually, I honestly couldn't tell them apart until they do something to me, aside from the obvious large brute enemy. Some enemies are also infused with the abilities of the heroes, so some will be fast as the Flash or go invisible because Batman. I don't know what they infused from Batman, I guess they just gave them all TikTok maker mill by joining my shifty money-making course videos. Visually, it's nice to play a Rocksteady game that isn't rainy gothic buildings, the game is set in Metropolis and it reminds me very heavily of the recent Fallout games. The city is full of very tall buildings and different districts to explore, jump and swing around in. You do venture into other worlds and do some missions, and they are cool but mostly just come to a desert but with a landmark from the main map, and a desert but with a landmark from the main map, but it's dark now. So hopefully through seasons we will get more varied areas, but it does look fine and seeing a big spooky ship with big tentacle arms floating around, it is a pretty cool spectacle. So to go in the live service part of the game for a small bit, this game is a live service and will feature battle passes, store items and seasons. At the time of this video, there are no battle passes or seasons yet, but there are store items but they are as lame as they come. Annoyingly, it's the deluxe outfits, but with more customizability, which in my opinion is stupid. I got the deluxe outfits, let me customise them without having to buy another bundle. And as I've said many a times, it is a live service, so the story really doesn't feel finished. It just goes, right, that's dealt with, but the threat of Brainiac goes on. Go and grind missions. Overall, the game is nowhere near as bad as people thought it would be. Yeah, it's another live service looter shooter, but the gunplay is fun, characters are fun to play, and hopefully we get more cool characters and locations in the future. If you have no interest in these characters, the game is probably just a hard miss unless you really love more loot to shooter gaming. But I think for DC fans, it is fun to play as these characters and have some neat interactions with the Evil Justice League. The gameplay is solid enough to where playing through the main story is fun, but once you hit the end game and are just running the same missions, you may just get very bored. So it's probably wait for a sale of some kind, because by then we may have more characters, bosses and areas to run through. That is if the game actually survives that long. 